Oh, you know what, you love it. It is time for Twitter talk. And yeah, a, a lot going on um, in terms of uh, why is Dan, who, what, hairline, hairline fracture. Cannon bone, correct. Cannon bone, mm -hmm. um, back in training. And we'll go to Twitter talk here. And let's see. We're going to start with, with uh, we start up here at the top, right? Is that where we start? Sure. All right, he's back on the work tab. Wise Dan worked a half mile in 48 and 1 Friday at Keeneland. They're an eight year old. He's made, what, seven and a half million dollars in his career. Really cool that he's back on the work tab. He's been through so much throughout his career, but he's persevered and uh, looking to get a race, uh, you know, maybe next month or September. Well, it's 286 days removed from the, the grade one Shadwell uh, turf mile, the race that he won back on October 4th, 2014. So it's a, a wonderful thing to see. According to the note that I have here, yeah. that workout was on the turf. I don't know if this Cody photography is from this morning, for example, right. Right. but it was listed actually on the Keeneland turf course, which, which I thought was interesting. But let's, let's continue okay, to take well, a look let's, at uh, let's, the uh, Chuck Lepresti, the trainer, since a great job saying, uh, first word, he did it easy. Jen wasn't even asking him. So real, you know, we'll blow it up here. So Chuck Lepresti, please, and he's been oh, yeah. so good with this horse. Right. Right? I mean, he's been so patient, and he's done what's best for Wise Dan at this stage. Well, I, I think the, the whole idea is that, you know, there's no pressure. Uh, knowing there is pressure, but there isn't pressure as far right. as saying, hey, we have to make a race at, at a particular time. I mean, why is Dan, let's face it, he's either a racehorse or he's, he's in retirement and enjoying that retirement. But here's a horse that's proven that, that he enjoys the game as he proved uh, winning back-to-back -back, uh, Horse of the Year titles. Yeah, and here's Claire Novak saying that Chuck Lepresti um, likely will stay at Keeneland for at least a few more weeks, less pressure than going right to Saratoga. It's kind of a mob scene there at Saratoga, oh, the yeah. paparazzi right. and all the media that will be sure. at Saratoga right. surrounding Wise Dan. We saw that last year. Well, that, it, makes, it makes perfect sense to stay there right there. And, and, and Charlotte Presti, <clears throat> Chuck has done such a wonderful job. He knows what's best because a big part of it, you know that uh, Wise Dan is a crowd pleaser in his own right. He can feel the intensity of an active meet in a meet in which they're racing. There's yeah. a big difference between that and just kind of a training environment that you get at Keeneland. And, and, and you know about this a little bit. I mean, this is why as Dan, he's, he, he can just see the joy in him because this is what he wants to do, right? He wants Absolutely. to be on the racetrack. He wants right. to be training. He wants to be getting ready for a race. Well, that's just it. I, I think that the good horses truly know and, and share how much they, they, they love the game, not only just based on their antics, but uh, how they perform out there on the racetrack. And I think his track record speaks for itself. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where he comes back, whether it's the, it's the four-star Dave. Again, um, th this is uh, at Horse Breeders, uh, Keeneland Breeze, two-time horse here, Wise Dan. No time getting back to business. Uh, Bailey uh, Gallison at Starting Gate, every sport needs its heroes. So happy to hear Wise Dan is back. Yeah. I mean, this could be pretty cool if we see American Pharaoh, um, you know, Haskell, August 2nd, Sunday, and then maybe we see Wise Dan. I don't know if he'd come back to the four-star day. No. Is that pushing a little bit in the middle of no. August? I, I think it's very doubtful. I, I think Would the idea, Mile, Bernard Baruch more likely? I think the idea is to get one race in prior to the Breeders' Cup, knowing that the Breeders' Cup is at Keeneland this year, you know, keep him, you know, within – arm's reach without uh, overextending yourself. And it's nice that we've had some, some good news with, with Wise Dan because um, you see that this tweet here, California Chrome, Lady Eli main sequence going down with injury. It is good to see. It's nice to have a nice story this year because yeah. the main sequence story, to me, doesn't bother me really. He wasn't going to be himself. He's going to be fine. He's going to be 100%. California Chrome, that's just a weird situation, kind of a soap opera type story. The Lady Eli situation is the serious situation out of those three names. Right, and I haven't heard uh, an update here in the Laminitis, last 24 folks. hours. Uh, reported to have stepped on a nail coming back from the, uh, the test barn after uh, winning the, the Belmont Oaks. And that just shows you, as I had tweeted out earlier this week, you know, for these athletes, you know, 1,000 pounds of, of muscle and, and pure uh, energy, uh, just a, a little nail could, could ultimately right. threaten their life and their, and their livelihood. And in this particular case with Lady Eli, our hearts and uh, prayers going out that uh, she will recover from this. As a trainer, a former trainer, horseman uh, throughout my life. You just don't know. You don't know. Uh, it, it's kind of a, a situation where- That's a scary where, thing. Exactly. So, so Chad Brown, you know, our heart uh, going out to you in hopes that uh, Lady Eli can get through this. And in regard to California Chrome, like you said, Matt, it's, 
kind of a weird situation, it's very odd. to say the least. But uh, the good news is TaylorMade steps in. Hopefully they'll make some smart decisions on the future of California Chrome reported bone bruise. What does that mean? Well, it could mean a number of different things. But uh, I hope that if they do decide to bring it back as a racehorse, which I'm not banking on, the fact that Stephen Coburn sold out his minority percentage tells me that likely it's a, a stud career on the horizon. That's just my two cents. And for Wise Dan, uh, being told by producer Evan, the Chuckler Press, he said Woodbine Mile, Shadwell at Keeneland, then the Breeders' Cup wow. Turf Mile. So the Woodbine Mile for is Wise a Dan, that's the goal as, as of right now. You know, he's eight. I mean, yeah. my all-time favorite horse is John Henry. He was horse of the year at the age of nine. Yeah, he was. He's my all-time favorite. Right, back in, back in 1983. We actually have something in common. I believe. Oh, we have a lot in common. We do. So we do. Besides um, 80s music. Again, <laughs> there's that 48 and one workout. Is there anything new here? Uh, okay, let's, let's click this here. Uh, racing stats and info. Oh, wow. Cool. We, we had a nose like uh, separation at the wire yesterday in the ocean. So the fat, fast, past four runnings determined by a photo, neck, neck, head, neck. I think it was a nose yesterday, though, right? It was a soul driver coming back to win by, by an inch. Well, in it had race, to have so. been one of the four that he mentioned there. So, anyway. Neck, head, neck. Gary Doherty, he comes up with some nice stats, some fun stats. Okay. And uh, you'd be surprised. But how about Mike Smith, by the way? Three, three winners for, for Mike Smith. Okay. Um, soul driver, enterprising. Mr. Here Commons. You're right. Mr. Yeah, it was a nose yesterday for no soul driver. And... Mr. Commons, who we thought was going to be a, a terrific racehorse, he had a good career, but I don't want to say he underachieved. He made a fair amount of money. I think John Sheriff thought he was going to be better than he was. Mr. Commons, Mr. Commons was his own worst enemy. He was his own worst enemy, and I, I think that, that's really what it comes down to. Matt, as you look, look in the mirror, the only thing to fear is the one you're looking at, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> but Mr. Commons, one of the three winners in the ocean side for Mike Smith throughout his illustrious Hall of Fame career. So good that Wise Dan is back. And that concludes this edition of Twitter Talk.